What is good, everybody? Welcome to an Epic My Damn Toys video. Tonight, I have your TLC 2019 full show review and results for you guys. As you know, these videos work. We're going to run through the entire card, breaking down every single thing that happened at WWE TLC 2019. You know, going into this show, I was not that excited for it. Only one or two matches was I really looking forward to that much. But, you know, would it surprise me? Would it shock me? Would it be better than I thought it would be? Would it have me more invested than I thought? Let's find out here together, guys. We're going to run through the entire car breaking down everything that happened in every single match. I'm going to give you my personal thoughts and opinions on the matches themselves, give you the results, and tell you everything that happened on TLC 2019, and uh, just talk about everything in between. So with that being said, guys, let's go ahead and dive into WWE TLC 2019. So starting off with the pre-show, guys, this matchup was not announced before tonight, but we did have Andrade Cien Almas with Zelina Vega taking on Humberto Carrero in a singles match on the kickoff show of TLC, and this matchup was pretty solid. You know, both guys can work really well, and they flowed really well together. We saw this matchup on Monday Night Raw. This was a rematch. Carrillo did defeat him on Monday Night Raw. He defeated Andrade, and then here in the rematch on the kickoff show of TLC, he picks up another victory over Cien Almas. So uh, I, I guess that Cien, Al Cien Almas is not getting the push that Carrillo is getting. So Carrillo is getting the push over Andrade here. He does beat him twice and I don't know what they're going to do with Andrade, man. It's very crappy to see this for Andrade losing two times to Humberto, but you know, it is what it is. I, I mean, I don't know what to say besides it sucks, man. I like Andrade a lot and to see him lose twice here is pretty crappy, man. So uh, that is the match that we get here to start us off on the kickoff show. Andrade losing in an effort to Carrillo. So we open up the main show with the SmackDown Tag Team Championship ladder match between the Revival and the New Day guys. Big E and Kofi Kingston obviously representing the New Day. Xavier Woods out with an Achilles injury. I don't know why I didn't know that. I knew he was out, but I didn't know the extent of the injury. But an Achilles injury, very big deal. I mean, that's that's something that's going to take a long time to recover from, uh, given you know, how, how severe it is. But an Achilles injury is pretty severe. But this matchup was very fun, guys. Very great opener. Perfect representation of an opening match match, how it should go, how it should be. Tons of fun action in this thing. I mean, we had so many incredible athletic spots and incredible spots from Kofi. I mean, you could tell he's still super over with the crowd, and I understand why he is and why he should be. I mean, the, the, they were killing it, man. The Revival did excellent things. I thought, I thought we saw some really cool spots in this matchup. Uh, one thing that I thought was really sick is when Kofi went for the, the baseball slide, and the Revival like slid back so that he would come up under the ropes, and then they smashed him with the ladder like repeatedly. I thought that was very creative creative right there. Uh, just tons of excellent stuff. We got a big ending off the top of the ladder. Uh, just a very fun match, man. I thought it was really excellent. Great way to open the show. I thought the right team won. You know, the New Day are just untouchable at this point. I mean, I don't know what to say. Um, I love the Revival. I'm a big advocate for both teams. I think both teams are really excellent, and they did not disappoint in this opening match, man. Such a fun match. Such a great opener, and uh, I, I agree with this result of the New Day defeating the Revival. Excellent stuff. I mean, not much, not much else to say about this one. Great fun opener and I'm glad that the New Day retained their tag titles in a great ladder match, bro. If you missed this one, definitely go back and watch it. Next up, guys, we had the next match that I was the most looking forward to. We started off with one of the matches I was looking forward to, then we popped it right next on to the next one with the next match I was most looking forward to with Aleister Black taking on Buddy Murphy, two of my favorite guys on the main roster. Just excellent work between these two guys. This match was pure magical. I thought it was excellent. It was hard-hitting. It was tough. It was, it was beautiful. The sequences and just the technician of both of these men was incredible. I enjoyed this match thoroughly. I thought it was excellent. Um, pretty slow pace, to be honest with you but I thought it worked so well. I thought it was great. And if you guys missed this one, I highly suggest you go back and watch this one as well just because of the pure magic. It was pure magic from start to finish. I thought it was great. Uh, both of these men beat the hell out of each other. Aleister Black with a bloody nose for most of this match because he caught a knee, I do believe, from Buddy Murphy. And just that ending sequence before the Black Mass was so beautiful, man. Just such good stuff from both of these guys. And uh, Aleister Black did win. I did predict that to happen with the Black Mass. Black Mass is very protected, as it should be, from the WWE. So this was excellent stuff, bro. Really good stuff. Um, I loved it from start to finish. I, I enjoyed this match thoroughly, and uh, I was going to be happy either way, whoever won this match. And Buddy Murphy did end up losing to Aleister Black, which is okay with me, and uh, I support that. Great match, two for two, three for three counting the pre-show opener, but uh, th this match was damn good, bro. 
Next up, guys, was the Raw Tag Team Championship match between the Viking Raiders holding an open challenge, and I figured this would be who answered it. I thought it would be either the OC or the Street Profits. It ended up being the OC, and Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows come down. I feel like we've seen this match a bunch. It was just really slow-paced, really boring, to be honest. Just a nothing match. I mean, this show could have done without this match. Uh, but, you know, nonetheless, we got OC versus the Viking Raiders. The best part of this match was the KFC on the outside of the ring. You know, they had the best, you know, the fans got to sit ringside to eat KFC and watch this match. Uh, just, uh, I, I think those people were plants. I, I figured they were plants. They end up going through the table. Uh, they, the, the Viking Raiders put Carl Anderson through the table, and it was a double disqualification, and the Viking Raiders retained their Raw Tag titles. Nothing mattered in this match. It was just a bland match. Uh, definitely a downgrade and a downer compared to the first two matches we got, or the first three if you count the pre-show. Uh, this match was a downer, but the Viking Raiders do retain their Raw Tag Team titles. Next up, guys, we have the TLC match between the big dog Roman Reigns taking on Trash King Corbin here, and uh, I'm just not big on this feud, man. I just don't like the, you know, the stuffed dogs coming out, the big suited dogs and the dog food and the just... I don't know, man. Just not big on this feud. You guys know that I don't like Trash Corbin. I'm not. I, if, you, if you're new to the channel, you know uh, he's. I can't stand him. I can't stand him. He's not believable to me. Uh, he's gotten insanely better since I, you know, since he first started in WWE. But I still just, good lord. I mean, this match had its moments. I'm not gonna lie to you. It had its moments, and uh, I thought for a second there at the end that Roman Reigns is gonna kick out of this. And I actually tweeted that he should have kicked out. I thought it would have been hilarious. I thought it would have been great. You know, just to see him kick out of that. But my boy Dolph Ziggler gets involved. I knew he would get involved in this matchup. Predicted it in the predictions video and he comes down and he helps out Trash Corbin. I hate to see that. You know, I, I really like Dolph Ziggler better, I think, as a single heel or I like him better as the underdog babyface. But nonetheless, he comes down and smashes Roman in the face. Hits him with a zigzag. The Revival get involved. Hit him with a shatter machine. Trash Corbin with the end of days on Roman Reigns onto a chair and that was it. I mean, they went through the announce table. They, I mean, it was a, I mean, it was a decent little effort. I'm just over this feud, man. And since he won in this fashion, that means that we're going to get more trash time here. And I'm sure they'll cross paths in the Royal Rumble, or they'll have something leading into the Royal Rumble. I'm not sure, but uh, I hate we're going to see this feud continue. But this match was what it was. Nothing too crazy. But Roman Reigns does get defeated after a lot of help comes in for Trash Corbin. Trash Corbin picks up the victory over Roman Reigns. And uh, yeah, it looks like this feud is going to continue. Next up, guys, we have the singles match between Bray Wyatt and The Miz. This was not a championship match. There was no Fiend involved in this matchup. There was no nothing, really. It was just a singles match between regular old Bray Wyatt, the Firefly Funhouse Bray Wyatt versus The Miz. And this matchup wasn't really much of anything. It was more storyline-based, I would say. You know, we had uh, we had The Miz beat up on Bray Wyatt for a while. You know, the, the Bray Wyatt is doing such an amazing job, man. I think this man needs to go to Hollywood. Just cut the, cut the wrestling gimmick, man. Just go to Hollywood. Hollywood. The dude is so good at what he does, and I am such a big fan of just regular Bray Wyatt. You know, I don't even think he needs the Fiend. The man's just so good at what he does, but, uh, you know, pretty much Miz worked him over the whole match, and then, you know, he was kind of no-selling and, you know, laughing at the pain and things of that nature, and then he hit a Sister Abigail on the floor, hit a Sister Abigail on the ring, one, two, three, and then the Fiend came on the Titan Tron, and he was like, okay, I'll do it, so he goes to the outside, gets a mallet, and he's like, I'm going to smash Miz's head in, and then out of nowhere, the lights cut out, out of nowhere, Brad, here comes Daniel Bryan out of nowhere, and he, he hits the shit, he hits the running knee on to Bray Wyatt and basically comes out there and kind of saves the Miz, man. It's kind of crazy, you know, he saves the Miz, and uh, he's got his hair all cut off, his beard's cut, it literally looks like he shaved 20 years off his life. I mean, this man looks so much more different without his beard and his, and his long hair. But I thought it was a super badass moment, man. I thought it was awesome, him coming out with the hood on, he looks like the freaking American dragon out there, hits the running knee, beats up on Bray Wyatt and then the lights cut out and Bray Wyatt disappears and Daniel Bryan is eyeing the Blue Universal Championship and I guess we're going to get Daniel Bryan versus Bray Wyatt at the Royal Rumble. I'm not sure exactly what we're building to. I guess we will find out in the coming weeks. Obviously Bray Wyatt wins this matchup. Wasn't even a championship match but uh, yeah, Daniel Bryan comes back and it, it was awesome man. I thought this was an awesome moment. Crowd was chanting for him and uh, I, I enjoyed it. Match wasn't much of anything, but I enjoyed the Daniel Bryan moment and the storytelling. 
Next up, guys, we have the tables match between Rusev and Bobby Trashley. And to be honest with you guys, I didn't watch much of this match, you know? I mean, I didn't really care about it going in. I love Rusev to death. But this feud has just been utter god-awful. And, uh, yeah, I was building a gingerbread house with my family when this was on, you know? I was spending family time while this match was on. And, you know, we had the whole family over watching, watching TLC while, you know, building gingerbread houses and having good family times and stuff. And... Uh, yeah, I was building a I was building a gingerbread house, and I did not pay attention to much of this match. Um, I saw a couple things here and there, and I don't know, it just looked sloppy and kind of slow paced, and it did not hold my attention very well. But I do know that Bobby Trashley put Rusev to a table and won, and I'm guessing that Rusev and Lana will be leaving the company very soon. I'm not exactly positive on that; that would just be my guess. But Rusev does lose lose to Bobby Trashley, and I'm not sure where they go from here, but. Yeah, that's pretty much the result of this match. Bobby Trashley puts Rusev through a table. And Bobby Trashley wins. And then for a main event, ladies and gentlemen, we had the TLC match for the women's tag titles between the Kabuki Warriors' terrible tag team name, Asuka and Kairi Sane, defending their titles against the man, Becky Lynch, who is also the Raw Women's Champion, and Charlotte teaming up here. And I'm very happy with the result of this one. I'm very glad that Asuka and Kairi Sane retained. I thought that was the better decision, the smart decision here. And this match was not good, ladies and gentlemen. It had some, it had some moments, you know, it had some cool spots here and there. But the match was overall completely sloppy, completely botch-filled. It just looked super soft. It looked unmotivated. It looked just depressing to watch. The chair shots were weak. It just did not live up to what these three ladies, without Kyrie Sane, did last year at TLC. This match was very depressing to watch. I was not a fan of it. It did not impress me. I was ready for it to be over. And to be honest with you, I can't remember the ending because it was so subpar. And uh, basically, Asuka did something to Becky. She climbed the title, or uh, climbed the ladder and won the titles or retained the titles. And Kyrie Sane, I think, was concussed at one point. I think she got her concussion on that, uh, that table when she jumped off the apron and smacked her face on that table when Charlotte moved. I think that gave her a concussion or something. And then it looked like she sandbagged Charlotte when she was trying to put her through that table with the power bomb. I don't know what the hell happened, man, but it was ugly. It was super ugly, and I did not like it. And uh, that's about it. I mean, my God, I, I don't know what else to say, ladies and gentlemen. It was not good. And uh, the Kabuki Warriors retain. Overall, I thought the show started off very well. I thought it was awesome with that. I thought the storyline for Bray Wyatt, Miz, and Daniel Bryan was cool. Uh, the latter match with New Day and the uh, and the Revival. And then, of course, the match with Buddy Murphy and Aleister Black stole the show. And that was about it. I mean, the rest of the card was eh or meh or uh at the most at the rest of it. But, I mean, I enjoyed the show overall. It's just, my God, that last half was bitterly just exhausting. Um, but that is pretty much it your, for your TLC 2019 review and results. Uh, I would love to know your thoughts down below about the show. Again, Buddy Murphy and Aleister Black was easily match of the night for me. I had a lot of fun with that match. And then, of course, the latter match with New Day was very fun. But uh, the rest of the show was pretty much meh, besides a couple moments here and there. But that is going to do it for this video, guys. Thank you so very much for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy. Subscribe to the channel for more epic WWE action figure videos. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.